The big focus on uh, LRC today. Prime Minister Modi was in Tamil Nadu today where he offered prayers at the Lord uh, Ramanatha Swami Temple this after taking a holy dip at the Agni Tirth Beach. Uh, the Prime Minister's visit to Karnataka and Tamil Nadu has been his third visit to South India in a month uh, while he's visited various temples in Andhra Pradesh, in Kerala and Tamil Nadu that have a connection to the Ramayan as these visits come ahead of the Grand Ram Temple Ceremony these visits also come ahead of the general elections later this year. So will Modi magic, which definitely works in the Hindi heartland, as we've seen in the recent state elections, will this magic and will these visits and the mega announcements that he's been making help boost the BJP in the South where they have been struggling of late? So the question we're asking, can the Prime Minister's South push take BJP's trajectory north? Well, uh, joining us for more uh, on, this, uh, on this issue, we're joined by... Salim Dharani Dharan, a spokesperson of the DMK, Ashwarya Mahadev, spokesperson of the Congress Party, Pula Rao, senior journalist, will also be joined uh, shortly uh, by Anil Antony, a spokesperson of the BJP. So he'll be joining shortly. Uh, uh, first and foremost, I'd uh, like to ask Salim, uh, uh, your, you know, what is your sense of the Prime Minister's visit? We do know that uh, in the South, as I mentioned, the, the BJP has been struggling. But even so, uh, the Prime Minister, this concerted attention to the South, grand announcements, also uh, the way he's dressing, he's, you know, it, while, of course, the politics of Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Andhra is, is very, very different, you know, in each of the places, he's been giving it that local touch as well. Yeah, so, firstly, thank you for having me in the show. Good evening. But I'd like to make a small correction with my name. My name is Salem Dharni Dharan. So, All right, I, sure. uh, so I, think I would like that to be corrected. See, I think any any intention, any words will have to be matched by actions, right? The ret rhetoric does not matter. Actions matter. Tamil Nadu, we give, we send about one rupee and we get 30 paisa back. South as such, we get, we send one rupee and we, we get about 34 paisa back. Compared with the Hindi heartland, where, where for every one rupee, they get about 2.5 times more. In fact, Another example I would like to say is recent um, flooding of Chennai and uh, and South Tamil Nadu. The rains were as high as we have seen in 150 years, right? We have never seen that much rainfall in 150 years, 120 centimeters. But we did not get any funding or assistance from the union government. Of course, they say they gave 900 crores, but that is part of the 2005 Disaster Management Act, which every state is supposed to get. And Tamil Nadu was supposed to get this due by July itself. Compare that with what happened in Gujarat. In Gujarat, when there were cyclone in 2021, within two days, Prime Minister announces 1,000 crores in addition to the State uh, Disaster Management Fund. And he visits within 24 hours Gujarat. But Tamil Nadu, we haven't received any money. Let me go to AIMS in Tamil Nadu. AIMS in Tamil Nadu was inaugurated at the same time as AIMS in Himachal, then ruled by BJP, same time as AIMS in Assam. But, AIMS, but uh, as recent as last six months, there was not even a brick in AIMS Madurai. And Tamil Nadu, for the AIMS, they requested us to get loan from Jaika Bank, the Japanese bank. But Union government funded uh, the AIMS in uh, Himachal Pradesh and uh, Assam, and that's why they're able to finish the all project right. now. So, yes, I do I believe in all the local channels there in Tamil Nadu. This is, you know, the big topic of discussion, not getting funding from the center. And uh, so you're saying that all these visits to the temple would not have as much effect as perhaps you know, the Prime Minister releasing those funds for South India, but also joined by Anil Antony of the BJP. No, I just want to, can, can I just add on, I want to make one more important point. Yes, go can ahead. Can I? Sure. See, DMK as such is not against any religion, but we don't believe in bringing spirituality into politics. Spirituality can't become politics. No, in politics, we are here to do public good, to do good to people. India is a pluralistic land. Where is pluralism right now? It can't, it can't fool people based on religion or based on all right so you're saying what so works and of course this is ground. something that we what all works know unemployment what works in the north does not work in the south and while all this appeals in the north a lot and as we've seen in the recent elections you're saying that none of this uh, you know uh, temple visits is something that appeals in the south anil antony a big focus by the prime minister on south india you know given that the bjp needs a push there you know you've lost karnataka you only got eight seats in telangana and you parted ways with the aid and at least to have parted ways with them in uh, Tamil Nadu. So really, the BJP in trouble in the South. Thank you, Gauri, um, for having me in the show. Uh, so first of all, I would like to start by clarifying and making it very clear that the Bharatiya Janata Party do not have any kind of differentiation between South or North or West or East. 
our prime minister since he started leading this country always have been governing with the motto the vision of sabka saath sabka vikas sabka vishwas and we have been working for all the 140 crore people of this country at the same time but our party as you are well aware at different points of time we um, were not that strong in many areas but things have rapidly changing for example in the northeast seven years back we were not there in any of the states there uh, in the government but now seven of the eight states in the northeast is governed by the bharatiya janata party along with our allies or by ourselves and the prime minister the allies, northeast, yes i right, four by ourselves and three with our allies of eight and the northeast itself our prime minister in the last nine years have gone almost 60 times now suddenly there is a lot of focus on the prime minister's visit in the south but the prime minister has been frequently traveling to every nook and corner of this country and whenever there is a narration that is created by the opposition that some people are being left behind which is not a reality we make sure that those kind of misconceptions are removed from at the start itself so in the south yes he has traveled quite a lot in the south also recently it is because of multiple reasons one there is a historic event that is happening on the 22nd of january there is a pran pradishtha that is happening in the ayodhya temple which uh, our honorable prime minister himself is a part of and to prepare himself for some of the very uh, important rituals there he is doing 11 days of extreme um, uh, a lot of rituals as well as a lot of kadin vrats and as a part of that he is visiting many of the temples in the south also and many of these temples he is visiting in the south there are four or five he has visited and each of them have certain historic connotations and linkages to many of the events that happened in the ramayana so he is visiting many of those temples related to that also and then along with that is all the visits it had many important uh, developmental work like for example in kerala he was there two days back he visited the tripuriyar uh, temple in uh, he visited the guruvayur temple but that is one part of it he also inaugurated a dry port in cochin um, um, the navy port and that is the largest in asia so we have developed all right so you are saying that this is there's not some mega push as all of us you know are uh, are looking at these three visits in in within a month and uh, you know looking at the prime minister doing these uh, you know rounds of, of the temples as well as making these big announcements in the southern states as uh, something that is coming ahead of the elections ashwarya mahadev your comments uh, on this and again uh, here i think this is somewhere where the congress could probably learn from the bjp even when they are you know weak in some states or they you know they they don't have as much support but they never give up they you know keep at it and uh, like we've seen in the past as well good evening gargi i think it's well and good to have all the rats the detox of the diets in in the run up to the consecration and the beautiful photo ops of visiting all some of the most iconic temples in the south absolutely well and good right but that doesn't take away from the fact that the south as a whole has been discriminated against by the bjp government whether it is as my colleague from the dmk just pointed out whether it's relief for the floods that happened in chennai whether it's the relief for one of the most unprecedented droughts in karnataka whether it's the upper bhadra project whether it's the mekedatu project whether it's the new metro line whether it's devolution in terms of the finance commissions there's a massive difference in the terms and the way that southern states are treated by the north and let me also add this singular comparison right when the bjp held a state in Kar uh, karnataka you saw the way that the center acted towards them and the stepmotherly treatment that has been meted out to non bjp governments in the south is it political gumption i believe yes but in a democracy i do not believe it is statesmanship for any central government to act the way that it it does and i believe today the southern push is great it wonderfully you know highlights the history i'm sure and the prime minister does love the opportunity to see some of these iconic temples but while he does that instead of mere announcements of thousands of crores there because this has happened time and time again before elections everywhere it is about actually bringing those things to fruition you saw several announcements for my state but the minute they were routed in karnataka there's absolutely no response on that you saw several announcements in other southern states also even when you bought the metro man to anil's own state and after which you see that there's a complete non committal attitude towards ensuring these projects get done i do not believe any 
any of this is going to resonate because of the rational based decision making that the south has always displayed and i believe that this may be a push for elections but it would be better if they spoke about development cuz gargi let me just end by saying this for a government that talks about sabka saath sabka vikas sabka vishwas and i don't know which kal we are in now right because they talk about so much development but today the entirety of their plank has moved away from all terms of development and has moved into the consecration of one temple which belongs to everybody not one political party which shows you precisely what the agenda of that party is because their development plank is not strong enough what so all right i will Maybe i will get I anil to respond to that in just a moment but let me get pulla rao in here and uh, uh, sir your comments on this yes uh, what works in the north does not work in the south uh, anil anthony saying you know there's no discrimination but clearly a lot of the southern states and this is something that unites them uh, they have this sense of injustice being meted out uh, by the center if you put in hard work in politics you get returns it just takes time gestation our friends are both right and wrong you see as mr anil has pointed out yes the bjp focused on the northeast which was a no go area after repeated visits repeated visits they have captured a government there and many governments in the south people keep saying south is out of bounds for the uh, for bjp or oh, for that matter it's not out of bounds for any part i won't say only bjp but they have to put in hard work there is a gestation period if you notice in our history when a party like the bjp enters a state it takes 40 years from 1951 when the jansang was formed they formed a government in 98 it took 48 years in karnataka it took 30 years they first got in a minister with hegde then slowly that's what the be that's the way the bjp works there was a gap in tamil nadu and andhra they abandoned their activities now they've started it is a gestation period and definitely i don't think it is totally transactional as mr selam has said that you give us 1000 crores for this you know it is part of it he may be right but the frequency of his visits to telangana to andhra to tamil nadu can like does it does bring something in the people you know it does make openings i will not say they going to capture power next time they going to win 50 of these hundred but they are making their way they are making very strenuous efforts yes you also mentioned that the congress party could perhaps do some of these things and it's for the other political parties to react if they want to protect their turf and you know i think that narendra modi has shown energy persistence and returns are not coming immediately the percentage of votes may go up definitely i think they will go up in tamil nadu and telangana whether they get mp seats or not is another thing the gestation period another 10 years 5 years 15 years we can't say but that takes time and they're right. making efforts and that's what i that's what i mentioned that you know the perseverance remains even after uh, what happened in telangana you know just a, a, a few days after that you had amit shah there holding a political meeting so that is something that one you know other parties and especially the congress could perhaps take from there yes. uh, anil anthony looking sentence. very cheered uh, sir by your assessment uh, your comments anil and what uh, uh, selam and ashwarya both those point the points that they made earlier see one i would focus on the points they made on the south where again as a party i am once again telling you that the party the, the one united party. point that they made was about how they they feel that these funds are not being you know given to the south and that is something that uh, and i believe on all local channels is also discussed uh, uh, quite a lot see we have a lot of non gram bjp governments across the state and now we look at karnataka itself aishriya's home state the congress party came there with a lot of promises and by month 6 they are all their exchequer is in a stage that they are not not able to deliver on many of the promises that we they have made to the people while you look at the bharatiya janata party like we have no such forms you look at i am um, uh, two of my uh, co panelists today were telling that our development agenda is not strong enough but let me tell you something very clearly that in the last when we are going for our third term what is our main plank is our prime minister's guarantee in the last 10 years we have guaranteed a lot of things and everything we have guaranteed we have delivered in the last 10 years just two year last year we overtook great britain we became the fifth largest economy 
we have almost doubled our gdp and in the last 10 years we have delivered on promises to such an extent that every single household in this country have now become a beneficiary of one of the 300 odd schemes we have started it's almost All 4 right, crore let me get selam in here selam dharani dharan if you could you know uh, answer on on that point and what mr pulla rao also said to complete this yeah, sentence the whole the point of the matter is this. i think the bjp plays with the numbers and percentages we have we are a population of 130 130 uh, crore people right so we overtaking uk a country of 8 crores in terms of overall gdp is not it doesn't matter what is your per capita gdp in real numbers right from 2004 to 2014 india's economy increased by about four times but when 2000 Uh, 14 to 23 okay, but what about 20, the point so, regarding so the perseverance of the prime so minister how has been lower what about the employment impact india's youth and employment is one of the highest in the world let me go also to the fact that al azira's recent article what did they say a sit a, a former joint secretary of the prime minister office said that prime minister wanted to uh, Bra- indirectly uh, influence the finance commission in reducing the grants that has been going to the states without the states how will the country grow only if the individual states grow the country will grow but if you do not want to give money to the states you do not want to have devolution how will the country grow the country cannot grow because each state in india is different the if you look at the socio economic parity in the country that is more diverse than even the countries of the european union the gra- all right i'm completely out of time i'll give the last word to pulla rao sir your comments you uh, on on this on this policy. debate on uh, whether the prime minister's visit is going to you know help the bjp's trajectory in the south well you know it is going to help whether you like it or not he has become a family of figure as you as you mentioned amit shah prime minister other leaders are always there they moving around it does affect you in this day when the television is the way of reaching people they are seen where what they say or the transactions they offer maybe they have to do better but they are there they become familiar they are not distant figures sitting in delhi they are there every day they are participating in many functions the way they are given the padma awards whether right. it, as i said it takes time 5 years 10 years if they persist but it is definitely helping them grow become familiar and reduce the anti bjp feelings that might have been there over the last years for various reasons but you know the All final right, was i'm 20- so sorry to cut you short them completely out of time but thank you so much uh, mr pulla rao and ashwarya and uh, selam and uh, anil antony there for joining us on the program today <laughs>